Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel, just on the fan TV, back at you on the video, man. Got my guy, Devin, with, you, uh, with me today. Uh, we're going to talk about that Ray vs. Browns game happening on a Saturday. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about it. We're going to get into it. Uh, so, never, man, what's going on, bro? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. Um, um, you know, what happened last game, still kind of lingering a little bit, just kind of trying to see what Snoop going to do. I mean, I heard he practicing and, um, you know, Lamar still sitting out. But, again, we kind of decimated when it comes to depth. Not like Anthony Brown. I don't think he's going to do bad if he were to go in or start or whatever. But I wouldn't want the hand the, uh, the ball to be in his hand, especially like this late in the season. And we try and get in the rhythm and try and get healthy and all that stuff. So still confident about what's coming up, though. But, I mean, overall, the season um, depends on the day when it comes to how I feel. Nah, yeah, the, the Ravens have been up and down this season, for sure, and make you feel that way. So, yeah, so you, you talk about the injury, so let's get into that real quick. Um, I didn't drop the game status video, so this video don't come out on a Friday. Um, so, look, for the Ravens, Lamar Jackson's out, like never mentioned. Uh, Morgan Moses, Kevin Zeitler, Jordan Stout, the punter, are all questionable. Um, I, I would think Stout's going to play. I'm hoping that Morgan Moses and Zeitler will go as well. That would be great. Um, as far as the Browns, they only got one player listed that's questionable. And that's David Bell. So, um, rookie wide receiver, I don't think he plays that much for them. But that, that, that's what they got listed as questionable on their side. Um, so, yeah, so the Ravens are going to have Tyler Huntley out there. Uh, he's been practicing all week, so they're good to go on that front. Um, so, let's get right into it, man. As far as the Ravens offense versus this Browns defense, um, anybody, I guess, you know, who you looking out for on that Browns defense and who you looking out for on the Ravens offense to make a factor uh, in this game? Browns defense, nine, nine five. Miles Garrett, you know, let's see what you know what what he can do. I mean, we know what he can do. Let me put it like that. I don't even want to speak up his name like that, but um, I do want to see how he gets to it. Um, and I know that he's probably going to want Snoop uh, name on a headstone outside on his yard coming up because uh, you know how he gets down. But I'm definitely. Definitely want to see how we can kind of um, keep him at bay. And offensively, while I, of course, think in Tyler Huntley, I want to see uh, J.K. I want to see J.K. get back out there and do it. I mean, you know, everybody was talking about how, you know, how he was looking towards the end of the big run. You know, how he was kind of galloping a little bit and didn't, you know, looked a little uneasy. Um, I was still overall, not even just that run, just the game in general, was just impressed with, you know, how he looked. Um, so I think he got a little bit that spark, that little that energy back. So I want him to. Um, that's that's who I got my eyes on, and the second tier under that, I'll put uh, Gus. But you know, again, I'm just looking at everybody else aside from you know the obvious Tyler Huntley. No, I, I can agree with that. Um, so I look at the Browns numbers on the season; they allow like 130 yards, was well, 128 yards a game on uh, rushing which is 22nd in, in the NFL, so the Ravens can get some success there. They only given up 104 of their last three games, so they've tightened that down a little bit. But that's that's what I'm looking for is J.K. Dobbins. I mean, I feel like we haven't had a chance to have our two-star running backs, J.K. and Gus, have back-to-back -back good games, right? Because when Gus had his good game versus Cleveland earlier this year, we go out and play Tampa Bay, and then he get hurt. You know, J.K. have his good game, and then he kind of gets like, uh, put in this wild rotation with him and King Drake don't really play that much. You know what I'm saying? So I want to see if these guys can have good games back to back, right? Because coming into the season, obviously we knew that he would hurt. It was going to take some time for him to get recovery and get back. But we wanted to see what this one-two punch could really be because we haven't really seen it, honestly. Like when JK was a rookie, they it was a three-way split, him, uh, Ingram, and, and Gus. And last year, JK get hurt, Gus get hurt. So we haven't really seen these guys together consistently so that, that's really what i'm looking for um on defense for the browns obviously uh you know uh, uh miles garrett of course um <laughs> i was going to mention that gravestone thing too like i definitely don't want tyler huntley's uh head on that gravestone either man so officer of line um you know morgan moses if he plays I, I think he will morgan moses um ronnie stanley gotta gotta hold it down uh but the ravens they they block really, really well in Ryan Stanley's in the lineup as a whole. 
he's a game changer at, at, at offensive tackle. So, um, and then I think you know, can they can they affect their linebackers on the second level, right? Uh, can they block up and get to the second level and, and break off some big runs? Um, now, one thing you did mention that that I said like during like my game like uh, review of the uh, the Steelers game last week was J.K. on that open run. Like he was dragging that leg behind him, bro. It really did, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully, you know, he gets a little better with the uh, with his stride. I, I I don't I know he had the second procedure to get to come back and feel better, feel uh more confident. I just hope that he didn't rush himself back because in the short area of quickness, he was good. Like he looked like JK, like, but when it came to 15, 20, 30 yards down the field, yeah, that was a little rough to watch. So hopefully. Hopefully he's all right, you know what I mean? But um, he had a good game, so we're going to leave it at that. You know, not going to say anything until, until something else happens. But um, So this, this this Ravens defense versus Browns offense, you know, obviously Deshaun Washington is back. He hasn't been overly impressive in his first two games. But we got to talk about him. We know we got to talk about him. So give me your opinions about, you know, that this Ravens defense versus Browns offense. Um. Brown's offense is touch and go. Uh, um, I I don't I don't think that Deshaun Watson should have even been playing this year. I mean, aside from you know everything else that happened, um, you know, once you look at the fact that he was suspended for that long, like uh, you just take the time, learn the offense, get those kind of things together. Because I mean, I'm not expect I wasn't expecting for him to come back and be like some superstar talent like he was and all this other stuff, whatever. But it's just not looking, I don't know, I guess cosmetically it's just not looking right. Um, but he would had a touchdown and a pick last last week, this last game. Yeah, and then um, if I'm not mistaken, like Nick Chubb and um, Kareem Hunt, it wasn't really anything coming from the running game either. And I don't know if I'd say that's a testament to the Bengals' defense or the fact that the Browns just don't look like much of anything anymore. Um, but, you know... I look at their offense. I'm, it's nothing. I've said this before, so not going to worry. But it's nothing too scary. Um, I'm really more so concerned about the about Deshaun Watson because flip the ball, DBs and consistency. Marlon Humphrey, I appreciate you being open and honest and candid and saying that you were the liability because <laughs> we all saw it and we all knew um, you're a better man than Marcus Peters because when Marcus Peters gets torched. You know, he tries to distract you by throwing throwing hands. Um, but you know, I don't want us to give Deshaun Watson those open those open plays or anything of the sort. Um, because I mean we can we have the ability to make some people look really good when they're throwing against our DBs and against the Steelers, it could have looked that way. But, you know, Roquan and Patrick Queen um kinda kinda saved the day a little bit in some regard. So um but yeah, you know, looking out for Deshaun Watson, obviously. Um, but then, like I said, just not even just Marlon, just DBs in general. I'm um, hoping that they can they can close the gap and we can get this win and get up out of here. Yeah, bro. No, that's that's good stuff. So I looked at Deshaun Watson stats for the last two games. So uh, versus old team, the Texans. We're talking about twelve for twenty-two, one thirty-one, no touchdowns, no picks. So no no touchdowns, one interception. Comes back versus Cincinnati, a little bit better, 26 of 42, uh, 276, one touchdown, one interception. Still hasn't been really that sharp uh, late. But you know, like, like you said, he been out two years, you know, what that's expected. Um, I am of the opinion, too, that he shouldn't be playing this year. But, you know, that's beside the fact. We hear now he's playing, so it is what it is. Um, but I think for this, for this game, as far as what the Ravens go, I think it's more about – like you said, not really about Cleveland. It's more about this Ravens defense being consistent, right? Because they have the chance to be a dominant defense. And Deshaun Watson, when he plays his best, was an elite quarterback. So don't give him a chance to find that rhythm and get back into that. Uh, make him uncomfortable. Uh, do whatever you got to do. I, I really want to see the pass rush get going. Uh, haven't haven't really heard a lot from the, like a Justin Houston in a couple weeks. You know, I think that he was better when he was playing less snaps. Because I think when he's playing more snaps, you know, he's an older player. He gets a little bit more tired, you know what I'm saying? So maybe he can play a little bit less, you know, and then he, he can just get get that pass rush going. Um, but I, I did want to ask you about this, right? Now, say the game is close, right? 
This is something that I've been struggling with as a fan. Do you have confidence in this defense to get that last final stop? Because I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I don't have the time. I haven't had this confidence since I said it before, since Ray Lewis left the building. Since Ray Lewis and Avery left the building, it's been like when we need to get that last stop, we just haven't been able to get it. And we have one of the best defense we, defenses we've had as far as talent goes since, you know, back then. You can, we've got a lot of talent on this defense, got to be honest with it. But that, like, that Pittsburgh game really discouraged me, yo. Like, Mitch Trubisky was, was, was dotting the entire game. Then the two-minute drive at the end of the half, it, I mean, he was, he, was, he was really going that drive. Then he threw the pick to Patrick Queen, which is, by the way, the best, best player of his career. Shout out to Patrick Queen. That was awesome. Then, uh, for real, I mean, it's a great play. Then, you know, it's 16-7. to Ravens need to get a stop. Close the game out. They go down the field, get a touchdown. 16-14. Uh, luckily, the offense closes the game out. But I don't know, man. So how do you feel about that? Do you feel like confidence in this defense to get that last final stop if needed? For one, the little subtle shot that Mr. Almost, uh, I don't appreciate because Patrick Queen went from almost getting the interception and almost making a tackle to now doing it. So we're gonna put him, we're gonna put him right there. He gonna have more more plays more like plays. that. So we ain't He's gonna say that to me. I mean, yeah, but you know, you you played him a little bit. <laughs> but to answer the question, no. I'm not confident, and I'm not confident because of the consistency of the DBs. I was a little shaky with that linebacker, you know, this earlier in the season. I was like, ah, okay, yeah, Patrick Queen, you know, he's yes, but no, here and there. And then now Roquan's in there, and those two are best buds <laughs> on the field. They just trading off rock, paper, scissors. Who wants the interception today? Who won the tackle? All right, cool. But then when you look on the back end, Marlon got a good game. Marcus Peters don't. Marcus Peters ain't messing up too bad. Marlon, what are you doing? And then everything in between, and it's like as soon as the pressure gets gets to, you know, a point where it's like, all right, like, close this game out, it doesn't happen. I don't even think Harbaugh even has the, um, the confidence that the defense is going to close the game out either. Like, he's shown it a few times. So I just don't. I don't want us to come down with that to that point, especially with somebody, even though he hasn't, he didn't play for what 400 some days. I don't want to get to that point with somebody like Deshaun Watson, who at the end of the day can make a play and can do what he has to do. I feel like once that, that twitch, once that muscle gets uh, activated again. So hopefully that offense, if we first, hopefully we don't get in that situation. But if we do, hopefully the offense is the last to have the ball so we can just get out of here clean and try to clean things up for, uh, for I'm going to be honest, for when it happens again because it's going to end up happening again. We're going to be in that situation. I've been trying to get away from it all season saying, no, it's not going to happen again. And, you know, here we are. Yeah, you know, you don't want that um that muscle to get massaged and then uh, next thing you know he's back to who he used to be. So uh anyway, so <laughs> um I feel as though with this defense, right, the the like I said, the talent is there. But what I feel like what happens is we get to the end of the half, end of the game really. Like I I look at the Jaguars game for instance, right? I just see I watched out there and I see prevent defense. You know what I'm saying? I I get it, you don't want to give up big plays and that's that's obvious, right? But they they be so far off the line. There's there's no challenge to the receivers. It's free releases. Um, we're not we're not blitzing the quarterback. You know, it's straight four man rush probably. Maybe sometimes even just a three man rush, and we're just allowing boom easy completion, easy completion. You know, eventually those add up, right? I mean, I looked at even the Broncos game, dog. We the Ravens could have maybe even should have lost that Broncos game. They let Russell Wilson scramble up the middle. If Russell Wilson gets three more yards, McManus is in sixty yards and he makes that field goal. Ravens lose. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just want to see this team close the door on somebody. And I do think that this Browns game, even though we could say, you know, the Browns aren't this or that, AFC North doesn't really lend itself to a lot of blowouts, man. You know what I mean? That, that's just what it is. It's, it's, it's a tough division. Um, and if both, teams have, both teams like to run the ball. So it's not like it's going to be like a an a offensive explosion or nothing like that. You know, even with Deshaun Watson back, the Browns are still running the ball like, uh, let me see, I had it. 
Yeah, so the Browns are still running the ball 30 times a game, even with Deshaun Watson back there. So, you know, it's not like that's that stopped because now he's here. So, um, I guess with that being said, you do want to give out any more X factors on either side of the ball. If not, then we can get to the predictions, man. Yeah, um, for our offense, I want to see Mark Andrews back. I mean, I know that they're putting a lot on him because um, they all know that he he's that guy. There ain't nobody else around, really. Um, I ain't going to disrespect nobody like that. Du- Duvernay, he's still my boy. Um, but, you know, when you look at it, you know, they like everybody's like, well, Mark Andrews, that the one that, you know, if you cut him off, all of the rest of the passing game going to stop. Um, so I want to see him get back. And X Factor, you know, <laughs> Greg Roman. Um, can, can we have a talk? Because <laughs> I mean, you saw the this picture I sent you, and it was floating around social media how you got three receivers within what seven, nine yards of each other, all on the same side of the field. Yeah. Come on, man, he got that play from Madden 2004. You know, the, the one with Vic on the cover, he got it from there clearly because don't know what he was drawing up. So, off the field, X Factor, Greg Roman, please do something, make, make something happen. If not, I will help you pack your bags. I'll even, you know, call the U-Haul so that we can go ahead and uh, get over to Stanford, like, now. So that's that's the way I'm looking at it. So that's the only other X factors I see, um, at least Ravens-wise. Man, unfortunately, Stanford already hired a head coach, man. So he he out there, he out there running. Um, but, no, nah, like, I, I did want to talk about that. It's like you read my mind today, bro. I had Greg Roman. That's that. That's one of the guys I had because, besides the, the the passing concept, which he said was it was a design run for Tyler Huntley. That, that's that's what he's saying. He he was saying it was to clear out the whole left side of well, well put everybody on the left side of the field, clear out the right side of the field, so Tyler Huntley could run. That's what he's going to say. And I'm going to say this: even if that was a design of that one play, there are still far too many plays where that wasn't the design, and people end up in the same area. So. Whether they want to use that as the excuse or the reason or not, I'm not going for it, whatever. Um, but I want to talk about his use of the quarterback run, okay? Tyler Huntley is not Lamar Jackson. Tyler Huntley is a good scrambler, right? You know, if he dropped back, one, two, not there, he'll go, right? Great. Tyler Huntley, I do not want to see Tyler Huntley in any read option. I don't want to see any power, uh, QB power with Tyler Huntley. He ran QB power and got his head knocked off, right? So I, I don't want to see that. He's not Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson can evade, get down, whatever, right? Tyler Huntley is not that. He's athletic. He's not Lamar Jackson. Honestly, no, nobody is. So and that's not even really a shocking statement, but nobody's Lamar Jackson. So, Ray Roman, let's be smart. You put our, you, you put our quarterback in concussion protocol. Let's, let's be smart. We know that Anthony Brown is the backup, right? And I like Anthony Brown, but he's an undrafted rookie. Who took what, like 15 snaps versus field or something like that? 20 snaps, maybe? He he come on. Let's not let's make sure Todd Huntley can stay in the game. Um, we got JK, we got Gus back. Let them run the rock. All right. King Drake is here. Let him run the rock. We don't need we don't need Todd Huntley running the football. Right. I would even like if Lamar didn't run as much as he did as far as the, the you know the design runs at least. Um scrambling is something else. If you gotta go out there and scramble, do your thing. I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. But that's what I gotta say. So yeah, great Roman on offense, definitely the X factor. Uh, on defense, uh, I, Kyle Hamilton, right? I I like I like everything Kyle Hamilton has been doing over the last couple of weeks. I want to see if Kyle Hamilton get his hands on the football, whether that's fumble, whether that's interception. You know, like he he may, he's playing well, he's making good plays, but can he make that splash play? That's what I want to see from Kyle Hamilton. So, um, all right. So now let's get into the score prediction, man. What's what's the score prediction for this game? It's going to be low scoring. I mean, uh, mm. especially, too, because it's hard for me to really even sit there and assess, like, how our offense is going to look because this has been so crazy as of late. But I think Snoop can get us in. I think we can – I think we can get – I think 20 is a safe answer. I think 20 is safe. I think that Cleveland or probably put up like a good 10 
13 maybe. I don't see them being able to really score, you know, against us like that, especially if, again, they have um, Deshaun Watson throwing the ball, what, 42 times? I mean, that's just them trying to get him in a rhythm of some sort. And as long as we stop it, you know, at least consistent enough, like I'm not looking for us to have, you know, a Legion of Boom DBs out there or whatever, but um, I think he's going to get one on us. And then, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a tight game. Again, coming down to the wire, probably, you know, it's at, you know, whether it be at the end of the half or the very end of the game, but we're going to, we're going to make it work. And Justice Hill's probably going to get all the touchdowns for us. <laughs> I said it. Uh, I forgot about the X Factor, Justice Hill. No, but, um, <laughs> so last, last week when I did the preview by myself, I said that the Ravens were going to beat the Steelers 20 to 14, ended up being 16 to 14. And I think I, I think I'm saying to myself that 20 points is too high, right? So I'm going to go a little below that. I'm going to say 17, 13, close game. Uh, I'm going to say the Ravens defense is going to have to get a stop at the end of the game to win it. I don't want that to happen, but they, 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 they need to exercise this muscle and get it, and get it right, man, for real. So, um, so Navin, you, you got, um, uh, you, you got your score. You got the Ravens winning the close one. You, uh, you said what, 20, 20 to 10, 20, 13. Twenty thirteen. Alright, so you so never got twenty thirteen. I got seventeen thirteen. So we 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 right there with the Browns so far, what they're gonna be scoring. Uh so yeah, that's what we got for this episode, man. You know, Ravens win a close one. Um offense is gonna run the ball. Browns is gonna run the ball. Dom dominating fashion. Who who can dominate their will on each other? That's gonna that's gonna win this game flat out. So this is the game that the Ravens need to win. All right. I mean, the Bengals are on their heels and they're not letting up. And this guy game is obviously an AFC North game, so the Ravens are trying to go to four and zero in the AFC North. It's a big one, man. So give me a y'all, give me y'all thoughts and comments in the uh, give me y'all thoughts and uh, sorry, score predictions in the comments is what I was trying to say. And uh, we'll talk about it there, man. It's your boy Gabriel, another fan TV. I'm out. <laughs>